you guys remember that story from Isaiah where the Assyrian army was marching to Jerusalem and God said that I will not let them enter Jerusalem and he sent an angel came down and killed the entire army. Dang. But they had apparently just found proof of that battle. No way. Yeah. No way. This archaeologist, he was like digging and found this old ancient Assyrian coin looking thing. Mm -hmm. And basically what it was, if I understand it right, it was a layout for an army and like what mountain peaks that they're at and stuff. And he's like, oh, this matches what I've seen in a, this one region. But no one had explored or dug or lived in this region for thousands of years. And so he went there and did pictures and stuff. And sure enough, it matched up exactly where this battle would have taken place. That's insane. Dude. And I think they're still continuing to dig and like find stuff of like the Assyrian soldiers and whatnot. Do you remember the writings on the walls in Nineveh where it describes Sennacherib laying siege to Jerusalem, but then Hezekiah paid Sennacherib a tributary, a bribe, and then the siege was relieved and the troops returned back home to Nineveh? Do you remember that? Because it has absolutely nothing to do with your God and your God version of the story, which is told a couple hundred years later. So you see, let me explain why Christians do this thing where they try to find something in history and then imprint their God on it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that their God did anything. This is how they just interpret the story to make themselves seem greater. You see, at the time frame of these writings of Isaiah, they were being the northern kingdom of Israel was being, being manhandled by the Assyrians. Mo, the overwhelming majority of cities were captured and destroyed, except for Jerusalem. Now, when Sennacherib was laying siege to Jerusalem, he laid siege to it until Hezekiah paid him off and then he, then he told his army to return. There was no battle. You see, the proof that they're finding of this, the archeological proof that's being found of this historical event it's being found, it's being seen that it was a siege, not a battle, that they left on their own accord, not died of destruction from some angelic being. And how in the hell would you prove that some angel did the killing? Let's say the Israelites manned up and came out there and start whooping the Assyrians' butts. You're taking away those people's victory so that you can say an angel did it. But that is not even how the story goes. The story is, the, sto the evidence is such that they were laying siege. There were, few, there were some skirmishes here and there, but the Assyrians tri were triumphant and then they left. They left Jerusalem and went back to Assyria. But see, what happens is that the uh, Bible believers want to believe that their God did it. And then when you get the writings of Isaiah, Isaiah now being under the captivity of the Assyrians and then being under the, and then later writers who said that they were Isaiah being under the captivity of the Babylonians are trying to inspire their people by, hey, when the, when the Assyrians tried to do it, an a angel came down and killed all their people and they left. You know, as a reminder, we're under this Babylonian captain, but if we are good to this God, he's going to save us. So those writings back in those days were written to either motivate the people to, you know, strike against their enemies or to motivate the people to get back to the worship of their God because look at what God did before. He smote those people in the name of Jerusalem because he didn't let them come into Jerusalem. He kept them out. And so it becomes a big, a big fish story in order to make the people either go back to their God or be obedient and um, or to muster them up for a fight. But truth is not what it is. It's not. It's just a big motivational speech. The truth is Hezekiah bribed that man. He bribed Sir Zechariah. So y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.